Looking for something new Not sure what hope to find it soon Not trying to complain But I could You know, this road has always given me the creeps Yeah, it's so dark out here It's like there's nothing I don't get why people want to race out here Deacon, man, it's too dangerous it the, Wait, 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 dude, hold up Do you see that thing? What, what the hell is that? What? Oh my gosh! Uh, hello? Are you are you good out there, buddy? I don't think that thing's human. Hello? Look at its eyes, dude. Yeah. You gotta get out of here, man. I've never seen something like that. Have, ladies, have you? No? It's coming closer. We, we gotta get out of here, man. Yeah, man. Floor it. We got floor it, dude. Floor it. Go, go. We gotta go, man. Holy shit, is that thing coming after us? Drive, drive, it's right behind us. Dude, it's swooping at us. Dude, it's getting way too close to us. You gotta drive fast. It's like, it's, it's like six, eight feet tall. Look at it next to that billboard. It's huge. What is that thing? I have never seen something like this in my life, but oh my god, there it goes. Dude, it's coming too close to us. It's about to be on the car. Faster, faster, faster. It's, it's trying to attack the car. It's on top of the car. You gotta go. Is it scratching us? What the hell is this thing? Go, go. Definitely something happened. Anybody will tell you that. They'll say, well, you know, we, we don't know what it was, but something was going on. We'll, we'll come to that conclusion that something actually happened. The Mothman is one of the most infamous cryptids in American history. But does he still haunt the small town that he once terrified? In today's episode, we're trying to find out. In many ways, Mothman has become West Virginia's favorite cryptid. The creature is recognizable to most of us between the black wings and the beady red eyes. And while no one knows the origin story behind Mothman, many have speculated that he mutated in TNT chemicals at West Virginia Ordnance Works. We are now standing in front of what locals call the Igloo. That's where Mothman was first sighted. Still to this day, uh, I believe people claim to see Mothman uh, around Point Pleasant. The TNT area there is uh, allegedly the place where he was created um, because the TNT area is where they made a lot of explosives during World War II. Somehow the chemicals, they want to say, mutated either a person or a bird or both into Mothman, and this creature is still living in the TNT area, Point Pleasant, which is actually kind of a wooded area. It's kind of wild. There could be creatures living there. Careful, this episode is going to shock you. You're watching The Paranormal Files. My name is uh, Jeff Walmsley, and um, I am the, uh, the creator and curator of the world's only Mothman Museum located here in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. For those of you who don't know what the Mothman story is about or what actually happened here, um, in a nutshell, the Mothman story has, has turned into a worldwide phenomenon, even though it took place here in 1966. People were seeing a, a large winged type creature. Some thought it was an enormous bird. There were a lot of different theories as to what people were seeing. And uh, at the Mothman Museum, we have a lot of the uh, original police reports and eyewitness accounts. You know, there was a movie made in 2002 with Richard Gere called The Mothman Prophecies. And again, that all goes back to what happened here in November of 1966. Point Pleasant is just a, a small uh, small town located on the Ohio River. We're about two hours south of Columbus, Ohio. It's a, a working family type uh, blue collar town. Everybody knows each other. Everybody um, knows you know what's going on in the town. But back in uh, November of 1966, you had uh, some strange events that happened that were the pivotal moments in the creation of the, you know, the Mothman legend, the Mothman story. And here we are 55 years later or more, 
you know, talking about, you know, what happened uh, to some of these witnesses. So I've always wanted to do a Mothman episode. I'm so happy that we're finally here. I'm so happy that you guys are giving this video a chance. I know it sounds weird. Mothman, oh, Mothman's not real. There's no way Mothman can be real. And I understand that. You know, I went into this investigation, you know, pretty much knowing that we're not gonna actually find a Mothman. I don't think that's really possible. But we're investigating this whole case a little bit differently than anyone ever has in the past. We're not specifically searching for the Mothman. If he shows up, that's gonna be great. But in this video, we're looking for evidence of the Mothman. We're looking for a portal. I'm gonna tell you about my theory in a little bit. We're looking for anomalies, anything strange that may have happened in the area. Because as you're about to learn, this whole phenomena, everything that was going on in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, it wasn't just limited to the Mothman. There was tons of strange, bizarre, unexplainable paranormal activity going on in that town while the Mothman was there, and paranormal activity that has continued to this day. In fact, I just got an email from a viewer of the show a couple weeks ago stating that they had recently seen a Mothman-like creature out in the woods near Point Pleasant. Now, I don't know if I fully believe in the Mothman, but it is interesting to have somebody email you and tell you this story because, yeah, there's so much mystique around the Mothman legend that there has to be something to it. And that's why we headed to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, to see if we could track down the source of this legend ourselves. I'm Jeff Brown, and I've been a paranormal investigator for many years. So with Mothman, I, I really had kind of just barely heard about it, to be honest. Uh, I didn't realize where it was, uh, w what Mothman really was it's in itself. But it's kind of amazing at how much history is associated with Mothman, how big of a a story it was back in the day and still to this day how much interest there is in it. So I just kind of really went in knowing a little bit about it, not thinking much was there and boy was I wrong, there was a lot there. So to start off this video, we paid a visit to the Mothman Museum. It's a very famous place in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, right in the heart of downtown. And we met with the owner, Jeff. And he's extremely knowledgeable about the Mothman legend. He grew up in Point Pleasant, he was a child when all of the Mothman stuff was going down. Some of the people in the story, people who saw the Mothman actually lived on his street when he was growing up. He's written multiple books about it, studied the case for years. And we wanted to get a comprehensive history of the Mothman. What is the Mothman? What are the details surrounding this legend? So buckle up. This is a very, very scary story. So get ready. I think it's gonna give some people online nightmares. It certainly did give me some intrusive and, and scary thoughts, but um, but yeah, let's cut to the Mothman Museum and introduce you to Jeff and let's teach you about the Mothman. On November 15th, 1966, you had two young couples, Steve and Mary Mallet, and Roger and Linda Scarberry. Now, Roger and Linda Scarberry grew up on our street where I grew up and it was a little street called 30th Street. And they were our neighbors. Um, even though I was about five years old, I, I barely remember a lot of the details about what happened, but as I grew older, I you know, researched, and I, inter I interviewed a lot of people that, that had uh, major parts in the, in the story. But they were out riding around in Rogers, uh, he had a 57 Chevy Bel Air. It was a project car, it was just an old beat up 57 Chevy. Back in those days, uh, the kids would like to hot rod, and they would go to the outskirts of town uh, to a place called the TNT area. Okay, so the TNT area is about five miles away from the city limits, and it's still there today. But what that was is during World War II, the government came in and created a manufacturing complex for TNT and explosives. It was a top secret area. A lot of the people that worked there didn't even know they were actually work. They would bring people in on buses and have them work their shifts. It was a, it was a top secret uh, area during World War II, but it's where they manufactured explosives and bombs and things like that. When the war ended, the, the government just basically left everything up there. There were power plant buildings, igloos. There's over a hundred bunkers up there that's shaped like an igloo, an Eskimo igloos. They just left everything. And in the process, they contaminated a lot of the ground. So this kind of sets up a perfect scenario for a, a monster type environment. And that's where the TNT area in Point Pleasant, you know, 
I always refer to as the, the T interior as being our version of Roswell because it's such a, a an elaborate 3,000 acre complex of nothing but uh, weird stuff, buildings and and structures and things like that. A lot of them have fallen down. So if you go up there at three o'clock in the morning, it's a very eerie atmosphere and stuff. At about 11 o'clock, uh, they decided, you know, they, they'd been up there drag racing and meeting up with their friends and stuff like that. They decided to head on back into town. And as they were coming past the North Power Plant, which was a three-story tall building, Linda was in the front seat and she noticed what she thought was somebody standing in the road about you know 30 yards in front of their car and as they got closer she said that's not a man and she told me she said it had two red eyes almost like a nocturnal animal about the size of baseballs about an inch or two apart and she said as they got closer and the headlights hit it she said the wings came out and she said the wingspan was probably 10 to 12 feet which is a very large wingspan so at that point, they didn't realize, if is it somebody in a costume trying to scare us? Uh, I asked her, I said, what happened as you got closer? And she said it turned and ran through the grass to the North Power Plant. I asked her if it flew, and she said no. It hobbled through the grass, very awkward, and went to the North Power Plant. Uh, at this point, they all kind of looked each, at each other in the car, and they were you know, kind of flabbergasted. And they said, well, let's just go back into town and let somebody know. Their plans were to go back to Tiny's Drive-In, which was at the end of our street, and it was like a little hamburger joint. You know, they had the waitresses that would come out and wait on you in your cars and things like that. And Linda actually worked there as a, as a part-time uh, employee waitress. So they wanted to go back and at least tell somebody, you know, hey, this is, this is weird. But what happened was, is as they headed back out to the main road, which is Route 62 North, they turned left to come back into town. As they turned, Linda said, I looked to my left and I saw it again. It was standing in front of a big billboard in the field. And she said it was standing there watching us as we turned onto the main highway. She said the wings went out again. She said the wings went straight down and it shot straight up in the air. Just almost, she said, almost like a rocket. It just went straight up. And then that's when they got a little concerned because they're on the highway. So about a few minutes later, they're still kind of puzzled as to what they were seeing. Uh, they hit the straight stretch on Route 62, and it's still there. As they hit the, the straight stretch, Linda said, I looked to my right, and I seen a leg dangling down against the window on the side of the car. She said it looked muscular, it looked like it was a, a person's leg. And then she said, I looked out and I said, it's over top of the car. So whatever this thing was, was gliding over top of their car as they were going down the straight stretch. That's when her husband, Roger, sped up and they were doing 80 to 90 miles an hour on the straight stretch because they were a little concerned about whatever this thing was, it may cause them to have an accident or whatever. Uh, I asked Linda if she could tell how big the wingspan was while it was over top of the car. And probably the most chilling thing she ever told me was when the wings flapped, and it wasn't like a little bird trying to keep up with them, she said it had a massive wingspan, but she said we could all hear the wings hitting the bottom of the doors on the car, making a thumping noise. She said it would go away for a little bit and then come back again. So this happened for about two, three miles all the way on the straight stretch coming back into town. <clears throat> As they come close to the city lights, it veered off to the left in a cornfield. So there again, the lights of the city may have scared it, but it went into the cornfield. They immediately went to Tiny's Drive-In, talked to the owner. His name was Gary Northup. Gary Northup is still uh, living. He lives in Columbus, Ohio. I called him on the phone about a year ago to mention to him that I would like to come and interview him. And I asked him his take on that night because, you know, a lot of people think, well, you know, they were just up there carrying on and drinking and all this and, you know, there's nothing to it. But I wanted to get a firsthand witness's account of what happened. And he told me it was around 11 o'clock. When I interviewed Linda, I asked her what time this was and she said it was a little before 11. So that timeline jived. 
He said he heard a pounding on the doors. He opened the doors, they came in, and he said he thought there had been an accident because in his exact words, they were, they were literally as, as white as ghosts as, as to what they had encountered. And uh, he said, I picked the phone up and called the sheriff's department and told him to get up to the restaurant. And in closing, I asked him, I said, do you think they were making the story up? And he said, absolutely not. He said, I saw how scared they were. That's why I called the police. He said they didn't want me to call the police, but he did. So that set off a two-year period of over 100 reported sightings from everybody, from teachers to professional people, uh, elderly people, seeing whatever this thing was, either in their front yard, flying over the airport, flying over the cars, whatever. People just didn't know what it was. There was a lot of different theories as to what was going on. The local newspaper reporter named Mary Heyer picked up on the story and she had an article called Where the Rivers Mingle and she had a, it was a like a daily column and she put that in her columns and everybody found out that you know what was going on. That attracted the attention of John Keel, who was the writer in New York. And he comes to town, kind of joins forces with Mary Heyer to solve the mystery. Now, I didn't mention that before all this happened in November, you had a slew of, of UFO sightings here. All through the Ohio Valley, Kentucky, Ohio, West Virginia, people were seeing strange lights in the sky, weird things happening, lights and going off and things like that. So people thought maybe there was a connection as to whatever this thing was. You know, they brought in a, a professor from West Virginia University. His theory was that it was a sandhill crane or a blue heron type bird, you know, just a indigenous to the area. A migratory route, it was flying south for the winter. People just happened to see it. Now, Linda and the others were offended by that because they said that is not what they saw. They, it was a more of a shape like a man. Um, I've, I've talked to people that, that were around at that time. Uh, one guy in particular told me it flew over top of him while he was hunting, and he thought it looked like a prehistoric bird. He said it, it had a wingspan every bit of 12 feet. John Keel comes to town. Uh, they try to investigate the story. Sadly enough, he never did see it. He told me that he would go back to New York. As soon as he get back to New York, they would call him, hey, we saw it again, you need to get back here. So it was like a cat and mouse, you know. He, he never actually got to see it. He talked to a lot of those witnesses, interviewed a lot of those witnesses and everything. And his book, The Mothman Prophecies, is based on all of those eyewitness accounts. From here, his book was released in 1975, and it still remains like the Bible for the Mothman story and stuff. So um, one thing that Mary Heyer told John Keel while, while he was here was that, you know, since she started reporting this stuff, that there were some strange people coming to her office uh, dressed in black suits, black derby hats. A lot of them had ties and glasses. She said they were very peculiar acting, um, very strange. She said they just, they just acted like they were very puzzled by where they were at. She said one strange thing was that when they talked to her, they never blink their eyes. She, she said, I noticed they never blink when they talk. She said, they're asking me questions. They're asking me why I'm writing about this stuff in the newspapers and that I really didn't need to be, you know, spreading any information that, that wasn't true. Nobody ever figured out if they were government agents, military personnel or what, but the men in black was, was real. I mean, you know, I, my, my mother came into the museum one day and saw one of the men in black mannequins that we have in the, in the museum. She said, uh, what, what is this? And I said, well, that's supposed to be the men in black that were here, you know, during all this Mothman activity and stuff. And she looked at me, she goes, I remember them. And I'm like, why are you telling me that after I've written two books? <laughs> and uh, she said, they dressed just exactly like that. And she said, your dad and I would see him downtown walking up down the streets and she said people here made fun of them because of the way they dressed. She said nobody here in Point Pleasant, West Virginia dressed like that. So they were kind of oddballs and they stood out. And when I asked her, I said, well, where did you see them at most of the time? She said they were always standing in front of Mary Heyer's office. And that sent a chill down my spine because that verified 
the fact that Mary Hire was true to her word about these people visiting her. Oddly enough, Mary Hire passed away four years later in 1970 of heart failure. She was only 54 years old. That was a strange occurrence too, because people thought, well, maybe, you know, it had something to do with these men in black, the stress and the pressure and all that. So uh, John Keel went on to investigate and uh, write books. The Mothman story grew and grew and grew. I mean, I get emails constantly, even now, from all over the world, people seeing weird things. And it's hard to say, well, it's hard to validate those stories for one because of the internet and social media and, and say, yeah, that's exactly what they were seeing back in 1966 here. So, uh, you know, the phenomenon has grown just like Bigfoot and Loch Ness and Jersey Devil and things like that. I mean, it has grown to gigantic proportion. In turn, it has also changed the town of Point Pleasant and really uh, created it as a, a tourist attraction because people want to come to the town where it happened and investigate for their own on their own. Uh, the museum is uh, we present the archives and the, and the displays and things like that and, and it's up to the person to decide for themselves. I mean some people come in and they'll spend four hours and other people will come in and get a good laugh and say well you know whatever it was. I mean the book has never been shut on the Mothman story, and I don't think it ever will because so many different people seeing stuff like that, especially back then. And it's hard to get a lot of those original witnesses to talk about it. You know, they, they'll admit to me that, they, that we saw it, but we just don't want the attention. We don't want people, you know, thinking that we're crazy or nuts or anything like that. But I've talked to some really um, legit and reliable sources that I can't understand why that many people, when you talk about over a hundred reported sightings, and in my opinion it was probably at least two or three hundred that never even went to the police or the authorities that just wouldn't talk about it. Um, I, if it was three or four people, I would be, I don't think we would be here right now. But with over a hundred reported sightings and people describing the same thing, I think there had to have been something to the story. and. Um, I think that's why the mystery still lives on and and people like yourselves, you know, want to come and investigate, talk to some of the people and, and kind of gather your own conclusions as, as to what it was and stuff. But it's the story is never going to go away and uh, I think it'll be here long after we're gone because of the the fuel and the fire that keeps building with social media, movies, documentaries, video games. It's just a story, I think, that, that grabs a lot of people's attention because of the complexity of it. You know, you had UFO sightings, you had the Mothman stuff, you had the Men in Black stuff, and then finally the collapse of the Silver Bridge, which happened actually 13 months to the day of the first sighting, which was um, December 15th, 1967. Now, that's maybe a coincidence. Some people thought that the Silver Bridge collapse was due to the Mothman activity and the Men in Black. Some people thought that the Mothman, you know, cursed the town. Some people thought it was here to, to warn people of uh, doom and danger and things like that. Um, but the bridge remains to be the worst bridge disaster in U.S. history. It was 46 people who died, and that instigated uh, Lyndon B. Johnson to create legislature to have the bridge inspections that we have today. So those 46 people, you know, didn't die in vain, but it was a bad time for here in Point Pleasant, and it still is. You know, every December when that, that date rolls around, you, you have, you, everybody knows somebody that knew somebody was on the bridge. When the bridge collapsed, a lot of the attention went from the Mothman to the bridge rescue and effort, and uh, people kind of waned away from the UFOs and the Mothman stuff. But eventually it came back, you know. Um, you know, people have been coming here, you know, since 1966 to mm -hmm. to look around in the TNT area to interview people, things like that. So um, it, it has all the makings of a classic monster story. I mean, you know, all those four elements put together and which are in the, in the Richard Gere movie, The Mothman Prophecies, you know, that's 
pretty much what opened the floodgates, I think, for here in Point Pleasant when that movie came out. Uh, anybody that lives here in Point Pleasant can go anywhere in the world and tell somebody, where are you from? Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Oh, okay, that's, that's where the Mothman was. So, But we invite everybody and anybody that wants to come to Point Pleasant to come and, and explore and, and um, visit the museum. We have the Mothman Festival uh, every year in September. That's the third full weekend in September. We started it in 2003. I think the first festival we had, we had maybe four or five hundred people show up. Now it basically shuts the town down. We had 15 to 20,000 people this year. All this stuff is available on um, uh, the MothmanFestival.com, MothmanMuseum.com. So uh, email us if you have questions or comments or anything like that. So I actually do have some questions okay. now. That, okay. Now that we've been talking that I thought of. Okay. Um, I guess this one's kind of quick. Could you just like describe the general consensus of what the Mothman looks like? Mm -hmm. A lot of the, uh, the Mothman witnesses describe this bird or creature or whatever it was as uh, standing six to seven feet tall, uh, two distinct red eyes. That's what got a lot of those people's attention. Uh, the head almost shrunken down into the shoulders, like the shoulders were up into the head. Wingspan of, you know, uh, 10, 12 feet. Some people said bigger than that. Uh, almost a dirty grayish white collar. Uh, some people said it looked almost like it had some feathers. Uh, it flew. People seen uh, seen it flying in the air. Uh, other people saw it running, you know, beside of a car. Several witnesses mentioned that it ran. Um, it never physically harmed anybody. It never attacked a car or anybody. Uh, but it did cause whatever it was. It caused a lot of mental issues with some of those witnesses who could not rationalize what it what it really was, you know. Uh, one witness told me she said, "You know, it looked like something out of a, out of a horror film, but something I'd never seen before." You know, um, it seemed to be inquisitive. You know, flying over cars, looking in windows, things like that. But it it never uh, it never caused anybody harm. It never physically attacked anybody or anything. What What do you think would be, in your opinion, like the most chilling experience? Is there like an experience that sticks out like, wow, that must have been powerful to mm -hmm. like ex to see? Well, along with Linda Scarberry and the other three in the car, they got a close look at it. Uh, there was one uh, lady in particular about a week later, her name was Marcella Bennett. I interviewed her in my second book and, and she uh, had a sister who lived in the TNT area with a bunch of kids, you know, her nieces and nephews and stuff. And um, she told me, she said, well, let's go up there. Because at this point, everybody thought it was a joke and people were, you know, wanting to go scare people and stuff like that. So she thought it would be good for her and her husband and her brother to drive up there and scare the kids. You know, go up and peck on the windows and, you know, have a little bit of fun with the story. Well, they, they did. They went up there to the house, which was in the TNT area and uh, pecked on the windows and things like that. But as they got ready to leave, she had her daughter her two-year-old daughter carrying her back to the car, which was parked in front of the house. And as she got to the car, she told me she got her keys, was going to unlock the car, and when she put the key in and looked to her right, she said there was a figure standing by her car. And she thought it was just a person at first, but she said when I looked at it, she said it was standing there looking at me and it had its head shrunken down into its shoulders and then that's when she said, I turned to run back to the house. And that's when she said the wings came out. And as she ran back to the house, she tripped and fell, landed on the, on the child, picked her up and went into the house. And at that point, a lot of the kids were running into the house. And she said she could hear the wings flapping in the background as she was running towards the house. They got in the house, they called the sheriff's department, and by the time the sheriff's de deputies arrived, it had already gone. But she said, I could distinctly hear the wings flapping, okay? So that was a real close encounter. A few weeks later, there was a two gentlemen by the name of Bob Bosworth and Alan Coates. 
and I knew both of them. Alan's still alive, and Bob passed away. They were riding their motorcycles up near the North Power Plant at this time, and they were probably 15, 16 years old. Bob Bosworth told me, he said they looked up and they saw two what they thought were lights on top of that North Power Plant. And he said, oh, it's just somebody up here with, he said it looked like somebody had a board with two floodlights on it doing this. He said, well, let's go in and scare them. We'll just go in there and tell them we got guns and we're just gonna go up there and shoot them if they don't come out. So they got off their motorcycles. He said, we went into the North Power Plant. This is all concrete catwalks and that, that North Power Plant was separate with boiler rooms and stuff. He said, we went in and we walked into the building. We started yelling, come on out of there. You know, we know you're up there. We're gonna shoot you, come on out. And he said, we heard something up on the top floor. Sound like somebody walking on broken glass. So he said, well, let's go up there. So they, they ventured up to the top floor. And he said, there was a door opening and the moonlight was shining through that door. And he said, if you guys don't come out, we're gonna shoot you. And you know, obviously they were kidding. They just thought it was their buddies in there trying to scare people. And he said, at that time, a large figure came towards the door. He said it was shaped like a robin, broad shoulders and tapered down. And he said at that point we realized that whatever this thing was wasn't anybody that we knew. And he said I literally could have reached out and touched it, but he said it stopped right before the light was coming through the door. It was almost like, again, it was almost afraid of light. But he said you could hear the glass and the debris, because this building was destroyed, kids had tore everything up. And he said it walked and it just stood there and looked at us. And he said, we looked at each other and we took off, ran out of the building and never went back. And he goes, and to this day, he says, I, I don't know what it was, but he said, it wasn't a person. It knew we were there. And see, a lot of people thought whatever it was was staying in that North Power Plant. The locals called that building the Birdhouse. That was the nickname of that building. So fast forward a couple years later when I'm working on my second book, and I had interviewed Bob Bosworth, but I had not interviewed Alan Coates, and I knew him from years back. I actually was their paper boy. I delivered papers to them. But I had to call him to get permission to use his name in my book. Called him on the phone. He said, I, yeah, I know, I remember you. I said, I wrote this book, you know. And I wanted to get your, your take on what happened. And he said, you know, he goes, I don't know what it was, he said, but I can tell you one thing. He said, I did a tour of Vietnam. He said, I seen some weird, crazy stuff in Vietnam. He said, but nothing has ever scared me like what I saw in that North Power Plant up there. Like, you're comparing his experience in Vietnam to that. So that told me right there, he, he said, it scared us. He said, we didn't know what it was. We didn't know if it was going to harm us or what. But he said, we never looked back. And... Uh, so those are just some of the, you know, the different eyewitness accounts from back in 66, 60 through 68. You know, you had a lot of people, um, you know, seeing it and it, 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 you know, it scared a lot of them. And a lot of them to this, to this day won't talk about it. They refuse to talk about it. They get a funny, funny vibe about the whole thing. I had several people for the second book that, that were scheduled to sit down with me and tell me their stories and, and uh, two in particular told me that they said you know we thought more about it and we just we really don't want to talk about it anymore you know we just you know bad vibes all around and stuff so uh, I mean it's what's interesting is that's still the largest catastrophe of a bridge yeah, yeah. right so and really it happened good. to be here yeah and it's just odd coincidence that you'd have the Mothman you know well, you know, there was people that said they saw men in black out there on that bridge, climbing up and down the side of that bridge. Mm -hmm. Marcella Bennett told me her uncle told her that on his deathbed, that he saw something flying back and forth a couple days before that bridge fell. Other people said there was strange men up climbing around on the bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the technical reason the bridge fell was a failed eye bar. And that eye bar, the bridge was 40 years old, and it was designed for 
horses and buggies, you know, back mm-hmm. in the 20s, you know, is when they opened that bridge. Mm-hmm. And then coal trucks and semi trucks and stuff like that. But right. uh, yeah. that uh, that eye bar, they, they traced it back to an eighth of an inch piece of rust in that one eye bar was a hairline fracture. And over the years, it just was like a bad tooth. It just decayed from the inside. Mm-hmm. And when that, if you could think of a bicycle chain, the cogs that go through the, mm-hmm. that's basically what it was. And when it snapped, the tower turned. And it just went like a deck of cards all the way back from the Ohio side over to here. Mm-hmm. And once that one tower fell, then it all came this way and then the other one fell. I've talked to people that watched it fall. It dumped yeah. people one way, yeah. then dumped it went people one the other way, way. Went the other way, and then that was it, you know. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've interviewed several people that, uh, you know, that watched it actually fall. Wow. You know, they were like, but at least there was some connection of people eyewitness saying they thought they saw things. There were you know, a few people that, you know, and, and, and you know, of course, as the years go on, it, things get embellished and stuff True. like that, yeah. you know. Well, last, you, lastly, for me, it would be the idea of UFOs and, you know, that big influx. Yeah, of yeah, oh, yeah. And then is that, did that just happen during that period? And then it kind of has that. No, I think off. it went all. I remember right. being in junior high. I mean, okay. my buddy seeing these strange lights in the sky that were up there for like four hours. Yeah. You know, they okay. stayed up there. I mean, but people in the 60s, you know, one lady on our street said she was pulling out of her driveway and one just flew right over her house in broad daylight. She said, I could see the bolts or whatever on it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, people were seeing stuff all the time. John Keel said him and Mary Hire would go down to Galpless Ferry and stand on a hill down there and see lights flashing in the sky. He said they'd take their flashlights and flash them and the lights would flash back. <laughs> in November of 66, before the sighting, the first sighting of the Mothman here, early November, uh, there was a man by the name of Woodrow Derenberger who lived in Parkersburg, West Virginia. It's about an hour from here. And he claims that he was driving down the interstate near Mineral Wells, West Virginia, and a spacecraft landed in the middle of the road and he said a, a being or whatever got out and that was referred to i think as the smiling man who came up to his car and communicated with him telepathically you know there was no language spoken nobody talking but he said i could understand everything he was saying and before he left he said we will see you again he got back in the craft, it disappeared. Well, Woodrow Derenberger went and told the authorities and, of course, you know, put up with the ridicule and things like that. But that was the Indrid Cold part of the Mothman story John Keel talks about in his book. And that was the name that, that he told Woodrow Derenberger, that his name was Indrid Cold and he was from another planet and things like that. So that, that tied in with a lot of the Mothman story here even though it was an hour away and it happened before this but in John Keel's book The Mothman Prophecies that that is a big part of that book The Smiling Man The Indrid Cold I mean that kind of goes to what I was asking about too is, is yeah. there's the UFO connection to Mothman uh, is right. there different theories on that too yeah, right? some people just thought I mean, whatever know. people were seeing was, was <clears throat> came out of a spacecraft right. or something you exactly. know um, so, but you know there's the theory of the, the large bird Sandhill Crane uh, a bird that got into some of the, the toxic waste in the tea interior. You know, they contaminated all that during World War II. It's still an, e- an active EPA cleanup site, the tea interior. So they thought, well, it was just a big bird that got into a bunch of chemicals and was deformed and was flying around, you know. <laughs> you said if you go up to that area late at night, mm-hmm. it's kind of eerie. Yeah. Have you ever been up there? Yeah. Like yeah. late? Yeah, any we, experiences? We, no, I've really never personally had any experiences or anything. I mean, um, there's people, a lot of paranormal investigators go up there in the TNT area. It's 3,000 acres. It's a wildlife preserve now, bird sanctuary. But there's, you know, there's some odd, odd people that that stay up there and, and, you know, make their way up there and stuff. But the, the complex of the TNT area was a large compound, and you just didn't drive up there and look around. You know, there was armed guards and... You know, what happened was, is after all this happened, in the first two or three weeks, um, everybody wanted to go up there and look for it. 
my dad included, you know, my dad, my mom, and me, you know, we're up there in cars mile, miles long, a, a lines a mile long. Uh, people were taking guns and rifles. And then what happened was the National Guard come in and said, look, we've got to quarantine the area off. People's going to get hurt. Somebody's going to get shot. It's a hunt for Frankenstein. And then that caused everybody to think, oh, they're closing it off because they know what it is and they've caught it. They just don't want to tell us. So the conspiracy theories all started, started up. But they, they quarantined that area off. They said nobody's allowed to drive through there now because somebody, they're afraid somebody would shoot somebody by accident or something yeah. like that. After you know, researching for so long, what do you think the cause of the story was? Do you have any? Well, I get asked that question in every interview is what I thought it was or what I think it was and everything. And I'm still, you know, I'm still as curious as everybody else. I mean, I've been lucky enough to talk to a lot of those people and compile all that information and, and give it to other people so they can, you know, decide for themselves. I, and I've always made it a point to tell people that I'm not in the business of trying to convince anybody of anything uh, because I don't know. You know, um, all I know is, is a lot of people seeing a lot of strange stuff that was never fully explained. And I don't think there's that many liars in Point Pleasant, you know. Granted, I think the story has embellished over the years and people have added stuff to it. But those original witnesses, those 20 or 30 original witnesses that were there when it happened, I don't, I don't think they had anything to gain by it, you know. Now, it's different now. I mean, people want to get on the TV shows. They want the exposure. They want to sell books and stuff like that, you know, more power to them. But I, I don't think that Linda and those other people realized that what they saw that night was going to change the projectile of the town like it has over the, fa the past 55 so years, you know. Uh, and I think a lot of those sheriff's deputies probably thought, you know, we'll go up there and look around, but two or three days from now, nobody will be talking about it. And that's not the case. I mean, there's, people are still fascinated by, you know, what all happened. Are there any, uh, any like weird things that people still report seeing in this area? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I get emails and stuff from all over the world and everything. And people come in here and say, you know, they saw some, you know, strange lights up in the TNT area. Um, about six or seven years ago, one of those bunkers exploded in the middle of the night. But that was because there was some illegal stuff in them that, that ignited and blew the whole top of the bunker off. But, of course, you know, there's YouTube videos of the fire shooting up and everybody saying there's a UFO that just landed in the TNT area. But <laughs> in reality, it was, it was an explosion that was caused by some black powder or whatever and stuff like that. Um, People stop in the museum all the time and they'll send me pictures and video and sound bites and stuff like that. It's just, there's so much of it, you know what I mean? And then I guess at the end of the day, final question. Mm -hmm. um, you've written books, own the museum. What drives your passion for Mothman? Or like, why does the story mean so much? Well, I think it's because not all small towns have something like this here you know what I mean it's it's unique it's interesting the museum was just um, out of uh, pure interest and in, in being somebody local who knew those witnesses and was here when it happened even though I was five years old so um, I just think it's just a unique position to be in you know and again you know they may come and, and believe in it and they may come and laugh at it and say that it's the funniest thing they ever heard of but it's still people get enjoyment out of it, you know. And you can't deny that something happens. Yeah, definitely something happened. Anybody will tell you that, you know. They'll say, well, you know, we, we don't know what it was, but something was going on. We'll, we'll come to that conclusion that something actually happened. Now, it could have been a Sand Hill crane. It could have been, you know, uh, I don't think it was somebody in a costume. I think the costumes came later. You know, when they figured out, hey, we can go up here and scare people and stuff. But those first few weeks, I think there was something, you know, something different going on up there in the TNT area. So, yeah, that, that first sighting on November 15th, 1966, when the weather was just like it is right now. Today's the 11th. Uh, Linda told me it was uh, about 11 o'clock at night. Clear sky, the stars were showing, and it was chilly. 
It's a chilly evening, so this weather's exactly the way it was. Mothman weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You know, I really can't believe how many people really saw the Mothman. All the different accounts uh, makes you wonder, you know, like all those people seeing something that must have been real. And it makes you think to this day, is, it, is he still out there? So after learning about the Mothman story from Jeff, which by the way is absolutely insane, some of those stories of sightings are absolutely bone chilling, we decided to go head outside and check out the infamous Mothman statue that sits in the heart of Point Pleasant. And it, it's made me wonder, what is Mothman? Is it a half man, half moth creature? Is it fuzzy and cute? Is it terrifying and mangled? Does it have, like the statue, the abs of a ripped godlike man and the buttocks of a Greek god? Or is it more of a squishy moth-like creature with creepy human arms and bug eyes? I don't really know. But uh, yeah, let's cut to the statue footage. This, this is pretty funny. Well, yep. since we're in Point Pleasant, you know we had to come pay a visit to the famous Here he is. Mothman statue. It's pretty dope, actually. <laughs> I like it. I wish we saw that. Yeah, this is probably the closest we're gonna get to Mothman, but oh, you never boy. know. Ooh, on a chilly fall night in November. Oh, shit. That's, that's happening, that's what Jeff was saying. That's literally what it is right now. November, and it's cold. On a chilly fall night, November, 66. Mothman looks like he works out pretty frequently. Yeah, he's ripped. Look at that, I'm kind of jealous of the Mothman, holy shit. What are we working with back here? Oh, dude. <laughs> oh, that's shit. That's oh Mothman is thick, oh, boy. <laughs> I feel like a Sherman out on that one. I, know, I feel like I shouldn't be looking at this, man. <laughs> Mothman, dude, you gotta put some pants on, bro. Mothman. Wow. That's yeah. really that's really a Mothman right those are, there. Those are two nice, healthy buttockses right there. Or is it just one? One buttocks. Is it a buttocks? Butt? I don't even know. <laughs> buns, I'd say. Plump, those plump are some moth buns. Mothman buns. Fresh popping up buns. <laughs> oh, little mothy. See a moth. Hopefully you come out tonight, man. And the moth be with you. I want to look into those beautiful amber eyes. Yeah. What about you? i tell you what, if I saw that thing, I'd say, fly me away, baby. Pick me up. You'd go with him? Yeah. Why? I'd hop on. Well, don't you want to ride on Mothman? <laughs> I guess, well, but he looks... I want to be dropped back off. Of yeah, course. that's what I'm saying. I think you. you just want him to take you. <laughs> I'm just thinking it'd be a great ride. It would be a good ride. You know? <laughs> what if he were tame? Like, it was your, that was your ride. It's like, hey, Moth, come on over. Somebody f with Got me. like a harness and a saddle yeah, on him? Someone f you like a dragon and the, you know? Yeah. Okay, I see what just you're like, saying. Yeah, I'm coming down. Uh, this dude wronged me. All of a sudden, he's just walking down the street. I'm like, Moth, <laughs> take him out. Yeah, he's like a hitman almost. And then we have like an actual nest up in the hills. You keep him alive, drop him in there. Wow. I don't want to talk about torture, but... <laughs> he's a, he's a good... I say some of my enemies, that'd be pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Maybe he's a really good guy. Maybe he's just misunderstood. I think that's what he is. He's misunderstood. Oh, dude, look at these. He's got some abs, dude. That's what I'm saying. Look at... I see the ripped abs. Knock on him. Washboard. Come on, let's hear it. Steel. Abs of steel. Wow, abs literally. Of steel, literally, man. This is actually pretty cool. Guess who did this? I don't know. Last name? Roach. <laughs> somebody must have been a little high when they did this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> let's get out of here. Oh. Hey, dude. Work your way back. Dude. Hey. This is really cool in here, right? It is. <laughs> yeah, so the Mothman allegedly made it sound like a sped up record. Or like mice? Yeah. Screaming. We'll have to try that out later. Oh. Didn't know they had you in this museum. It's your long lost brother. <laughs> Act really scared. 
<laughs> so while we were there to prepare for our Mothman hunt, we got our gear, we got everything, and uh, we headed to a place called Village Inn Pizza in Point Pleasant to have the Mothman pizza. It's a local favorite. It's a pizza that comes out in the form of Mothman. Yeah, let's cut to the pizza shop footage now. All right, everybody. So before we head out to our Mothman hunt tonight, we got some new gear, but we've come in to Village Pizza, which is a local pizza joint. Jeff's really enjoying that mac and cheese bite. They're hot, man. They're almost gone. And we have a special surprise pizza that we ordered that you kind of have to get when you come here. My eyes are watering. I'm super excited for tonight. Are you just going to keep filming until our pizza comes? <laughs> we can cut for sex. All right, here we go. So you got Mothman's eyes, his body, his big ass mushroom wings. These are his wings. He's kind of got puny little legs though. He needs to do leg day, man. <laughs> Mothman needs to hit the gym. His eyes are a little wonky too. Yeah, he's been on a little bit of a bender, I think. <laughs> he looks drunk. He's like Google eyed. Yeah, Mothman looks hammered. Wouldn't that be creepy if this is what we saw though? Are those tomatoes or peppers? Tomatoes. Yeah, what if we saw this exact thing out there? <laughs> that would be f***ing scary. That was the actual pizza. The pizza ma pizza moth Fine, man. Man. <laughs> Okay. If we don't catch Mothman on camera tonight, at least we got to eat him. Verified documented right here. Mothman pizza. So heading out to the Mothman forest, the TNT area, was scary. It went from being a residential sort of small town vibe to a holy shit, I'm in trouble, deep dark woods, freezing cold, pitch black environment. And as you drive down those roads, you can really imagine a mothman flying above you. You can see the wings as they spread across the sky. And you can almost, you know, in your mind, picture those red beady eyes staring at you from deep within the darkness of those woods. But we had to start our investigation at the first place where Mothman was ever seen. Okay, everybody, so tonight we're out here in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, on the search for the Mothman and the lasting impacts of the Mothman haunting head on this whole area. Now this place, this is where the story of the Mothman really began. This is where the four young adults were traveling down the road and Mothman was seen towards the side of the road pursued them, was almost attacking their car. Very, very bizarre series of events that unfolded right here. This whole area is the former TNT munitions plant. We're gonna be visiting the bunkers, the former location of the power plant. Yeah, it's really weird because we found out today that the Mothman, the first sighting of the Mothman was November 14th. And we're actually here on November 11th. So just three days from the actual day that Mothman first appeared. And he was always seen in this fall period. So it even says on the plaque, Mothman was seen on a cold fall, gloomy day. That's exactly the day that we have today. Just to state this, we're not investigating, you know, trying to actually get the Mothman on camera because obviously as you are probably watching this thinking like we are, we're not gonna get Mothman on camera. We're more interested in is the lasting effects of what exactly Mothman did to this community and the potential that there are other creatures, beings, energies in this preserve, this area that could still be here. Like I said before, um, I received an email recently about a girl who had actually seen a Mothman-like creature out in this part of the woods and she had heard it scream, which is definitely kind of scary <laughs> since we're out here now by ourselves. But when you think about it, when it comes to Mothman, Throughout the city, there were radio disruptions. There were bursts of electric energy. Lights would go off. Doors were opening and shutting. And obviously the Mothman wasn't doing this, but it was something linked to this cryptid or this creature, whatever it was. And that's what's interesting to me because that was powerful. And I don't really know what Mothman was. Was it an alien? Was it, you know, some sort of government leak, a lab leak? Was it, I mean, it's hard to tell, but it definitely happened and all this activity leads me to believe that there may be a vortex or a portal out here. Something that either the Mothman could have slipped out from, it could have gone back into, or maybe it opened. And that's why we're here tonight. We're going to try approach this investigation. This is the first time that I've really seen people go 
in depth into the Mothman story with paranormal equipment and tools, but we're gonna see if there is any energy left over, if there are other creatures here in the woods. And uh, I just wanna see, I really do have a feeling that there's some sort of a portal out here because of all the bizarre shit that's happening. And if you can see, it's absolutely pitch black down the road. There's no businesses, no lights, no houses. It's just this eerie, eerie place and it's giving me the chills. Another one of those exciting, chilly, chilly investigations outside, which is exciting. Uh, I'm cold. It's a little creepier than I thought. After hearing the story of some recent sightings, you know, could there actually be something out here that's, I don't know, a cryptid or something? I don't know what I believe, to be honest with you, but, you know, this is uh, pretty unique to do it this way, I think. And um, put the miles in, get here, find it put our gear on it's freezing but we're gonna do it man it definitely does feel i don't know if you, like i said you can see this but and there's like uh, out in the distance there's like a bunch of industrial smokestacks they're like shit they're, they look like they're like a hundred stories high yeah. you oh, know, right it, look, over it looks there. like a nuclear like a freaking i don't know what you'd call it you know something like, that isn't good like yeah, industrial waste whatever yeah, here's where the story started so many years ago. And this dark road is where our story starts tonight. Let's do this. Let's go, Let's man. Keep going. Okay. Now, before we actually got to the Mothman area, while we were driving down the street, we passed by two trucks, and Jeff didn't know where we were going. We were trying to figure out where the Mothman bunkers were, so he pulled over to ask these people what they were doing. Well, it turns out that they were hunters. It's bow hunting season. So he said that there were probably people up in the trees in the forest with their bows and arrows ready to shoot and kill any living, moving creature, which is a little strange and scary. And he also said that there have been multiple women who have disappeared from this forest area over the last couple of months. He told us um, a woman's car was found only about a mile from where we were at. And still to this day, her body has not been recovered. They don't know where she is or what happened to her. She just vanished. So those are all not things you would like to hear before heading out into the dark forest to do a paranormal investigation at 11 o'clock at night. But regardless, it was time to go meet the Mothman out of that TNT area. All right, folks, so we're out here deep in this area. This is the area outside of Point Pleasant where the old power plant used to be, where the Mothman was said to live. We're gonna head back, see if we can find the Mothman. You <laughs> like, I got a Mothman shirt and the Mothman squad. So here we go. Oh, is this a pond, dude? Holy shit. This is a little creepy about here. <laughs> oh, look at this What is that? What are those red eyes? What the f No, no, no. Oh, those are trail reflectors, I think. Oh my god. That's... No way. Somebody had to put that up there. That's good. Yeah. Look at that. I can't see it as well what as What is that, dude? Wait a second. Those are... Those are reflectors. certainly is f***ing creepy. Oh, shit. It's starting to snow, man. It's crazy. Whoever did that is sick. That scared me. Oh, look, there they are right there. That's where he said the bunker was at. God damn. Hello? Hello? Man. 
Dude, what's... Dude, can you hear that? Yeah, what was that? Listen, this is freaking creepy, man. This is, uh, remember the Mothman noise that he's supposed to make? Yeah. Like a sped up record? <laughs> okay, so we're just setting up, and the paranormal jump rope died the moment I took it out. Kind of weird, because, yeah, it was working when I set it down, and right when I touched the floor over there, it died. thing just spiked hella hard when we were setting up. I wasn't rolling. God damn it. Oh. Damn it. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, something's funky, man. Something's following us. Here, turn on the other. Should I put one by it or what? Man, that door just looks creepy. You yeah. know? The door? The door looks creepy, I think. Just the door. Oh! Oh! What the f***? Okay. Dude. Yo, this is the stuff. Dude. Dude, yes. What's the, the, the... Okay. Dude, I'm... Dude, I'm getting kind of freaked out here. Do you have a flashlight? I just have a flashlight. Can I see your flashlight? Yeah. Man, this is. Okay, it sounds like it's coming from the other, like outside. The noise. It's, fr it's freaky. It sounds like it's coming from outside. Oh, God. Hey Mothman, if you're actually what? Oh my God! I saw your shadow on the ceiling. Oh my God! Holy, this is so blurry. Honestly, though, why are these going off like that? I don't even know what I need to do here. Oh, dude, this is about the creepiest opening. <laughs> Who would ever think just like this one place? You know. Like what, what is, could there be like an energy portal? I think there's a portal here. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we start filming like it's like grooving again. Maybe we should set up, do you have any other? Oh my God. Oh. Dude. Okay, that one just sat out of the door. Somebody coming in? They're like, who the hell are you? I just expect something to drop. There it is. What the f What the f is going on with this stuff, man? Huh? Oh! Okay, what? What, what, is, what, is, what is going on? I've never 
never seen these things go off like this. There can't be anything in here. You want to come in? You're welcome. Come in. Try to light this green thing up right here. Okay. If there's a Mothman out here, if there is any sort of creature, or even a human spirit, we're out here to try talk to you tonight. We're not afraid of you. If you're the alien extraterrestrial known as Mothman, I don't know if you understand me, but I don't think you were bad. And I want to figure out why you came here. And I think that there's a portal here. Footstep back there. And if there is a portal here, and you can hear my voice, come to me. My name's Colin. I'm Jeff. So we're gonna go into this little circle right here. If you can hear me. Let's not get too far out. Follow me out here. So also to say, we literally, that whole clip was just, well, oh shit. Wait, what is it, what, which one is the, it? The REM pod right by us. The first one, you see it? Oh God, you're right, you're right in front of the door here. So what I was saying all day is I feel like this area is a portal of some sort. And God, those things are just freaking I know, going this crazy. whole trip, we haven't had any real major REM pod activity. We come out here while we're setting up, we had like a circling energy. And it's in there. It's like it wants us to come back in. So, look, we're gonna go in and see if we can figure out who's in here. If there is somebody here with us. If Dots can fly. If there is somebody here with us. Okay, that's a totally different look at this. Thing. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Okay, thank you. Can you light all these up? If this is a portal. This is actually an area right here. Yeah. Look at this. Can you light these up right here? Totally charged here. There's something in here right now with us. It's crazy. Okay. Can you step up? Okay, look at that. Look at that thing. Okay. You try it, Colin. Can you step away? I keep feeling like I need to go towards this door, you know? Dude, dude, dude. Do that one went off over there, there. Thank you, this man. Can you can you please step away from this device right here? Please step away. We need to just try to communicate with whatever's happening here. All we want you to do is to step away so that the lights don't come on anymore. Move back, please. Okay, I've never Okay. Okay, I can just on camera. Literally. Okay, so I'm gonna let you uh, I'm gonna let you I'm almost like speechless. Huh? I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna try to reset this, Colin. Jesus. What the? Is it this one in front of us? Yeah, no, it's this one. This one? Yeah. How is this possible? Hey. Hey. There's something right here. 
What do we? Let's think about. Oh my God! This one's going off here. Okay. Do 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 do. Oh! Dude, it's by the door now. Thank you. Can you like me? This thing's going crazy over here. I've never ever ever seen anything. You know? No, me either. But this thing. These are all new batteries as well. Yeah. Can you, you light like all of these up? Like if you're doing it, just that right here in the center? Oh. Oh. Dude, that's like a a European. Uh, dude, I'm getting like something. Okay. Oh my God, bro. Okay, we I'm gotta we gotta just take some breath breaths. Okay, they're just some lights. Okay, they're just, you know, they're just some lights. It's just you like all three? Oh, God. Okay. Jesus. Hey, we need this one, too. Can you like this one up, too? Dude, this... Dude, I want to... I feel like I'm going to need a break. That one's got a light. You got you to gotta reset that. The green one has not. How about the, how about, about the, uh, I can't even speak, man. How about the uh, blue diamond thing? I mean, should we see if something wants to come in or, I mean, something? Like so, whoever, <coughs> if there's anyone in here that's setting these lights off like this, there's a blue little light at the door, walk in and it will show us that you're here, or walk out. God, it's crazy, it's just quiet, so quiet. You wanna ask him? <laughs> What's that? I think it's just the echo. Outside, you mean? Which one was that? Oh, what is that? It's coming right there. It's over there. Oh, it's this one. Oh. Because of the lights. Literally, the moment that we walked outside, they activated like they wanted us to come back in. How weird is that? You don't want to leave this one on? Okay. If you're out here in the woods with us,
there's anybody out here. Could you make a noise? Okay, as Colin said, if there's anybody, I don't think we have to yell really loud because if you're if you're here, if it's the spirit even of Mothman, we don't know if you exist, but could you at least give us a sign, make a noise, make an animal howl? Can you walk towards us again? Okay, we're all the way out in this bunker. We're not looking for real people. We're looking for any spirits indigenous or otherwise, and it's specifically Mothman. If you existed, travel back, if you're dead, travel back like an astral travel. <laughs> what it was, that, I, I'm so cold, my mouth is, hey, I got this man, watch out. <laughs> Anyway, did you just tell the Mothman to time travel? Yes. Travel back if yes. you're dead. Yes, like <laughs> astral travel. Come back to where you like you were before. Okay, yeah. I mean, do you think he's still alive if he's out there or what? Well, no, maybe. Some people claim to have seen him late, like what? Yeah, the person that you 16? know. Sixteen? Are oh the piece that really? Yeah, like a month ago. Actually, that said they saw the Mothman. Yes. Really? Something like it out here. Out here? Yes. Fuck. This area, exactly, by this bunker. And they heard it scream, like, ah! Oh my God. Hey, if anybody's out here, spirit-wise, can you knock on a tree like this? One more time, if you can knock on a tree like this. Can 
Let me just see how quiet it is in there. Oh, we leave? Every time we step out, it's, it's it so it's like... It's so, it's just quiet out here, man. You know? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's deathly quiet. It's like I mean, I have to say, still. use the word that it is, it's like dead quiet. I mean, like, no wind. Look at, there's I a know. zero wind tonight. I know. Look at the leaves right there. This is like the stillest. And it's weird because it's been rainy and like windy all day. What's kind of weird is like when I look through here, it's like a portal right here, <laughs> you know, leading into the bunker. Can anybody come from the lake or the pond that's in front of me? There's a pond viewers out right out there. Come to the bunker and communicate with us. The pond is that way. Yeah, well, yeah, it's all, it was, we were walking right by it all the way up. There's like no wind here. I'm hearing from to the right. And it just quit. Are you in here? Come forward. Make some noise in the trees. God, oh, it's kind of weird to think about the missing women out here too. Oh, oh yeah, no doubt. No one knows what happened to them. Oh, like, are there bodies out here? 100%. I mean, what if they're, what if, what if they're like right in there? That's what I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of ground out here. Yeah. I mean, you never, never know, you know? And it's really dense too. It's just a place where Look the at, weird even things Even like the entrance of, above here, you know? Yeah. Like when you come in? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. So when we were investigating, my theory that I kept, uh, I kind of talked about earlier in the episode, I really, I think that there's a portal somewhere out there in Point Pleasant. I mean, back in the day when Mothman was going on, the Mothman was living in the TNT area. He was attracted almost as cheesy as it sounds, like a moth to a flame. But the creature seemed to be really, really interested in the TNT area, the nuclear power plant, the bunkers, the munitions, all the activity and the energy there. And it's a very mystical place. I mean, it's it doesn't feel right out there. But in my mind, because the smiling man, the alien that was seen, all the UFOs, the Mothman, all the paranormal activity, like the radios turning on and off, lights flickering in houses, doors opening, by themselves, people who saw the Mothman being affected by a poltergeist. It seems like there's a portal out there, and it seems like there's some sort of energy that still has not been investigated or, or explained. And to me, in my mind, it wouldn't be a human energy. I don't know exactly what type of energy it would be, but I don't think that it would be human. And that's, that's what I wanted to find out that night when we investigated. Did the Mothman come from a portal? Where did he go? What's causing all that energy and, and activity to occur out there? Well, the only way is to uh, to investigate. Okay, and we've got the we've set up the paranormal paranormal music box right here. That's blurry as heck right now. All of a sudden, for some reason. All right, everybody. So we are going to do a DR60 session, a voice recorder session, and we're going to be extremely quiet in here because of. The echo! So, yeah, we also turned the REM pods back on and while we were setting up. Oh, what? Okay, how is that possible? Dude, I literally have like. I'm like sick to my stomach. Like. Hey, 
Okay, to anybody in here, if you can hear my voice, I know somebody's here from what you've been doing to our lights. Can you just answer our questions using your voice? Can, can we just talk about like how much these have gone off though? Yeah, no, it's absolutely. I mean, insane. honestly, I have, I'm thinking of some spots like the Brumder Mansion, you know, with the Ed Gein knife and dirt red. Holy shit! This is like this is a lot. Amazing. I mean, the, all all of these in this area, and, and including this, and then they're just like silent. What was that? Okay, go ahead. So we're gonna do a DR60 session. Okay, and I'm going to start it here. You ready? Do you want to ask the questions? Okay, you, you start, okay? Who are we talking to? Who has come in the door that's making the paranormal music box go off right now? Who, who are you? Oh my god, dude, I'm, I'm totally... Oh, my legs all the way to the top of my head are just... What in the... What is your name? Something's, Something's right, right here. here. I've got a corner of that door right there. I, I'm, I'm going to have to turn this off for the DR60. Let's restart. Turn off. Just turn, turn off. Oh, it's really cold right here. Ready? Here we go. So as you can see, we didn't expect the music box to go off, but it did, which polluted the audio. So what about that? Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn this off too. This seems just weird now. I don't think we've ever had an investigation where we have to turn stuff off because it's going off so much. Okay, let's start it. Okay, okay once again, we'll start again. Colin, you start. Who are, Who are we, we talking, talking to? to? Do you know who the Mothman is? Are you the Mothman?
Can you say the name of this town? What structure collapsed when you were around this area that killed a lot of people? Are you from this planet? Can you give me one of the names of the people that were in the car that you flew on top of when you were first sighted here? Is there actually somebody here with us? In this room? Is there a portal in here? Thank you for that. Can you do that again? Look outside. That was crazy. Literally, dude, this is the fucking craziest shit I've ever seen. Okay, I really have to stop just the investigation for a second and, like, genuinely ask what the fuck people online think could be causing that. That hands down has to be some of the weirdest evidence. I'm like genuinely afraid of like whatever could be in here. It's like really, it's intelligent and it's, and it's strong too. And it's used all of our devices, every REM pod and the music box, except those two by the door. But it's something's in here. It's like energy, dude. I don't know what the fuck it is. But I'm like, my mind, I'm like, I can't really wrap my head around exactly what is happening here. I, I mean, no, I mean, I've never obviously had, how many times have these things gone off? And I'm, even intelligently, I can't, I'm That's actually, good. I'm actually really cold too. So I can't really talk very well, but my chest hurts again. Like there's like some bad energy here. I think we should step outside and try to listen to this. But get it, get it really cute. There's nothing that we've ever done that's had that much ever, right? Once you don't, you think? It's really scary. I mean, but, like, I didn't think we'd get anything out here. But I mean, you? it's pointed the other way. Yeah, that way. Brand new batteries too. Brand new, two brand new batteries. Doesn't matter. It's. Are you still in there? that there's like this much energy and oh. you want to keep doing that go ahead show us you're in front of it dude i think it's because i'm so cold too like my chest and again don't people online say like okay you're gonna your health and is in jeopardy i'm just trying to explain like i think it's because of a combination of the cold but kind of like the is it fear or yeah just anxiety but i'm really surprised that i mean we even said on the way out here right that it was creepy but then yeah. as we we're walking we're kind of like hey it's not that bad you know <laughs> it's like every time i say something it responds but then once you're out here <sighs> do you like my voice if you like my voice 
go ahead and play that music box. Okay, if you know my name, make... Oh my god, dude. Dude, I'm getting like freaked now. I don't even know. Ask another. Dude. Dude, you should feel my body of people if you knew. I'm literally, I say charged, I am supercharged here. This is like... <laughs> okay, if you, you are responding to me, thank you, I was gonna ask you to stop playing the box. Thank you. <laughs> are you from another world? If you are from another world, make the music box go off now. If you're not, if you're not from Earth, can you light up that little object or step into the center of the room? I mean, that's just crazy, dude. Here, why don't I? The one right next to it, the REM pod right next to it. Something just fell on me. Oh, dude, what Something is that? Something just fell on me. Look at that one leaf back there. Do you see that? Well, the one I was telling you about earlier? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. Look at this thing. The music box. Are you playing with it? Did you just drop something on my head? Why is that one leaf moving? Okay, this is going off. Watch. Off. We're gonna turn it this way. Oh, dude, dude. dude, that wasn't me. It's still going. Hey, that was over there. Didn't like you turned it off. Dude, I don't know. Oh, man. It just feels so weird to me. I don't even know what's going on. This is like an energy chamber, dude. It almost feels not human, but not demonic or something like that. Like, I don't feel like a ghost. Yeah, let's step outside. I gotta get out of here so you can listen. I'm to gonna turn this on. I'm gonna turn this on. I want to point out, it doesn't feel like a uh, a human spirit. Doesn't. You know how there's like a specific vibe when you are in a haunted house. I'm sure people online will know the feeling of being watched, like someone's here. I don't feel like that in my chest where I'm like there's somebody right here but it's like I do feel like there is something setting all this off because it's too intelligent and it's a really weird dizzying almost nauseous um not good feel you know and being cold the way it is out for me too yeah and I it's just it's actually affecting me in how I'm thinking and and actually my my body my chest and my and that thing I think is connected to me yeah that's what I'm feeling right now I mean, come on, guy. I mean, I've never, ever, all these years we've done this, I've never, ever seen all this stuff go off like this. No. Not this much. Okay, if, if you know who I am on the music box, you like to play with that, go ahead and make it go off for me. Show us that you know you're intelligent. Can you please step forward and get in front of that device? Oh, there it went. It went, dude, dude, dude. Thank you. We're not here to harm you, okay? I don't, I don't even know what to think. Let's listen to the DR6. Okay, okay. It's like when you turn away from it. We're here. If it's people, 
if you're hunting or anything, we're we're just doing some stuff here. Yeah, if it's a human, please let us know that you're here. Dude, I think we should go out and shine and blast the light out here. Oh, this is so fucking creepy. But dude, let's get the thermal camera come out. Oh, our car is right there. Why not? That scared me. Our headlights. Why? Right there. Oh my god. Dude, this is crazy. Hello? Okay, let's hold You ready? Okay, we're gonna listen to this now. Sorry, everybody online. We're just as hard to like process right now. Shine the light in there. I can't because it's so thick. Just let's listen to this one time from the beginning all the way through. I mean, this is really a crazy place, guys. Is it gonna start over again? Yeah. Did you hear something right away? Yeah. That's what. Yeah. It's like screams. Okay, we have to listen close. Something's moving around here, but I can't see or... Oh, Jesus. Okay, let's get the flare camera. I can't believe this has gone off. So coming out of the first bunker, I was really excited to use the flare camera, which I like quite a bit. So there's a lot of trees, thick trees around the bunkers, and as we walk from the first bunker to the second, off to the left, is a, a very large pond as well. And so there are a lot of trees in the pond. Again, very cold. Uh, there was a little bit of wind. Clouds were hanging low. And so the flare really picks up heat signatures, if you will, either cold or hot. And I was trying to capture any kind of anomaly in the trees or in the brush or up in the sky over the pond. And just walking from the first to the second bunker and doing that uh, pretty much the pitch black. It, it's, a, it's an eerie image to see the flur on one hand, yet it's kind of exciting as well because you're hoping to catch something. And so as we walked from the first to the second bunker, I ran the flur camera the whole way and scanned the woods and the treetops. Just a really great piece of film to watch. Okay, so we've got the flur camera right here. This is the thermal sensing camera. Got a static camera set up right here. If it focuses in. There we go. And I've got this natural EM meter. So I'm going to be scanning. We're going to walk a little bit down the road to see if we can find the other bunker that's near here. There's like 12 or 15 that are on this complex in this area. And I'm gonna run this natural EM meter to see if there are any weird electric, magnetic, or some of both anomalies in this area. And you're gonna and scan I'm, for I'm that. Gonna, I'm gonna be scanning with the floor. Yep. Okay, we're gonna start it. Yep. So. 
So, as you can see here, there are some strange levels of magnetic energy. Mothman! Looking for electric energy. There's none over here. Some slight reading. Pretty baselined out here. tree is creepy. I can imagine Mothman perched up there. What? This is the Mothman's forest. My light just died. Oh. Fucking light just died. Some intense magnetic energy out here, though. Keep spiking. I'm just trying to get some imaging of, you know, the trees like this. Oh, this is crazy. I'm trying to scan across the pond, you know? You can see the red is the pond. Yeah, you might need a few film. I guess you can maybe just to see if we can get any signature source at all. I'm gonna make a new clip. Have any ideas for this? Okay, real quickly everybody, before we get back to the video, as you know, the best thing that you could possibly do for me, I will love you forever, is like the video that you're watching right now and comment in the comment section below, Mothman Lives. By commenting on the video and liking the video, it helps boost me through the YouTube algorithm, an algorithm which is very mysterious and frustrating. So if you do anything for me today, you wanna to help a stranger out and be nice, hit the like button and go comment Mothman lives in the comments section below. And if you do that, you're entered to win a free gift bag. So I'm gonna give you 10 seconds, go do that now. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, we're gonna pick a gift bag winner soon. As always, everybody, once again, please make sure to like the video, leave me a comment below, leave me four or five comments if you can, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel with your notifications on. We wanna hit a million subscribers as soon as possible. It's only with your guys' help that we can do this, but I hope you're enjoying the video. Let's get back to it, and uh, yeah, much love, everybody. Wanna show yourself? So basically we just came in here because my camera battery died and we're gonna get the aptees out there while we search the woods and those, both, both those REM pods went off at the same time, twice. Which is just highly, um, it's like impossible. I don't even know how to describe what that is. And it doesn't feel like a scary, you know, evil, dark human. It's like, it's really weird. But... Oh, dude, come here. Oh, the thing's going cold. The thing where it's pointed, right where it's pointed. It was like all yellow. See all the blue? Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at the blue. Look at the blue. 
it's colder when that device went off. Look at that's where it's pointed. Look at how it's changing. I'm not moving. Can you move again? Make those devices go off? Something just went off. I don't know. The light. Did your rope go off? What was it? This, this one. This big, big like, like oh, should last for days. Dude, dude, look at the blue light again. Look at the blue. It went off again. What? Oh, oh look, 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 look at the blue. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, dude, look at the blue. And look at the footstep tracker. Oh, my God. Dude. Oh, and that one went off. Look at the blue. Oh, my God. So my portal theory really was starting to make sense. I'm talking about it right now days after the fact, but back when we were filming the video, that was just a theory that I had that I had been thinking about all day after hearing the story, researching the Mothman legend, and seeing all of those REM pods, all of them go off in chorus at the same time. I really can't think of an explanation for that. It's really strange. It's almost as if there were phantom signals that were making the devices blip, you know, something, an energy pulse that was coming through the bunker area, through the woods. I don't know where it was starting from, but there was definitely something out there that was causing all of our devices to to alert. I mean, this is an abandoned nuclear bunker. This is a, a wooded area. There's no electricity, there's no power, there's no... There should be nothing out there that would cause these devices to behave as they do. I mean, you put a REM pod in a building like this, a hotel that has active running electricity, and it's not gonna behave like that. So it's definitely weird. I'm, you know, I'm skeptical myself, but if there was to be a portal somewhere in the world, I would imagine that there would be a portal somewhere in Point Pleasant in a place that spawns so many bizarre paranormal entities and activities that have still continued to this day. Okay, we got fresh batteries. We're gonna walk down into the Mothman's forest a little bit and do a little spirit talker session. Mothman! We're gonna build a bonfire. You wanna come join us? We're gonna have a big flame. Will you come over to us like a moth to flame? Mothman, do you eat mothballs? God, <laughs> says no humor. <laughs> Whatsoever. Oh shit, here you go, buddy. Really? Oh. Now that. Oh, it's open too. Dude, Jesus. <sighs> I didn't know there was a second open one. We should almost bring all of our shit. We should do the no. Estes in this one. Hello? That one is fucking way creepier. I'm gonna do a spirit talker session now while Jeff sweeps with the fleur. If there's somebody here, or maybe in that bunker, <coughs> my name's Colin, this is my dad, Jeff. Just use your voice and tell me the answer to these questions. <laughs> Is there somebody in that bunker right there? Do you know about the story of the Mothman?
Have you ever heard that story? Is the Mothman an alien? Or a monster? So we're now in the second bunker. This one has a bunch of pentagrams and sigils drawn in it. And for me, it's definitely, it feels darker in here. We've already seen some weird EM spikes, like in the other room. And uh, we've got a static right there, static right there. Jeff's filming. And we're just gonna have him Ask some questions. It's really cold. Yeah. It's probably been seen a long time. What? Okay. Stop. And I. Oh, shit. Okay, Colin, is this a place? Is, who is who is here in the place? Is there someone in here? Are you human? Spirit or something else? First of all, are you here? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Are you human? A human spirit? Are you... I'm human? understanding. Are you, did you just make that go off? Do you live here? No. Okay. Where do you? I'm in the same something as you. I'm in the same as you. So you live on Earth. What is this place, that room right now? What's it called? X11. Okay, I don't understand that. Clearly, what is this place we're inside right now? What's it called? There were two. Yeah, well, you're right, there were two bunkers. We're in a bunker, right? this is number two. That's what I'm assuming you mean by that. Do you consider yourself to be from another world? I am. We've been trying to find you. That was a girl's voice. Find me. Oh, oh man. I hate to go down the path. But are you one of those girls that went missing in the last month? Are you Can you hear me? I can. Are you one of the girls that went missing this last month? 
Aaron Dolmond. Or Aaron Durant. Aaron. Probably too much of it was actually one of them. Okay, Aaron, tell me who you are. Aaron. Ow. Okay, let me try to contact Aaron again. Aaron. Were you hurt or injured out here? And my nose is spuffing up. So Aaron, again if we try to help you, were you injured? I heard out here? The stars. Is that a clue as to where you Listen to me. Damn, okay. I'm gonna let you I've talk. known you. Okay. I just gonna, I'm gonna listen to Trains. You. Go ahead and say what you want. Been with you a while. my favorite time of year. Okay, I'm just, I'm just letting you talk. Something's coming. What is it? What's coming? Change the world. As you know it. The life of it, you know, this thing, it's going on. I can't even light on that. Remember. Do you know anything about the missing girls? How long is there in your last town? Anything you can help us with? Anything at all? Missing. Missing, yes. You're right. They're both missing. Anything you can tell us about? Red car. We're in the car. Is there a... They found one of the two cars. Where is the where is the missing car? Do you know where the missing car is? I saw it. It's the first one. Use it box Let's go. Again, can you tell me where, where the missing car is at? Water. Is the car, missing car, in the pond? <laughs> Mothman Museum. Yeah, we were there. But can I ask you again? You said the car. Is it in the pond? I'm saying it's a yes. Whoever I'm talking to. Oh, weird voice. Yes. Oh my gosh. Like a whisper. Okay. You guys are watching this? This is really crazy. There's many people. Okay. Did you see who hurt the teachers? Who hurt the two missing girls? The hunters. Wow. That is absolutely insane. Um, 
Can one of you step forward and tell me your name? Christy. Christy? I want to go home. Okay, Christy. Um, where are you right now, Christy? Do you know where you're at? Oh, loud voice. Shut up! Okay, we've established communication. Thank you so much. It so sounds like you saw the girls that were probably their lives were taken by hunters. I'm identified. Identify, okay, yes. But. You're also telling me that the one car they didn't find is in the bottom of the pond. Do the hunters live in this area? Don't believe. Okay, can you step away from that device, please, so it's quiet? Thank you for communicating with me. I think you're trying to help us with the two missing girls. Can you give me I don't want to talk. Well, thank you. You've been talking, but I don't know if I'm going. I'm not trying to be annoying. I'm sorry. I heard snuff film. Snuff film. I wish I could help you. Can you tell me how many hunters were involved? I know Harold. Harold? Was there someone else with Harold? That was the hunters? Can you tell me another? Or was he the only one? No, you said hunters. Again, can you please find the way? There's something here? Yes. Uh, Who is? Oh, I think over by that wall. It likes to play with the music box. If you like to play with the music box. Inhumane. Well, I don't know if you're talking about the girls again. I kind of have a really feeling that that's where you are. Who's in the room with us right now? Mitchell. Can you hear me? I can. And if you ever want to play with the music box, can you sing something? Are you the one that's trying to give me information about the two missing girls? No. Hmm. Okay, so who are you? Who am I, who am I speaking with now? The Preserve. Okay. Can you go back? Poor animals. No. Animals? The hunters, maybe? I don't want violence. You don't want violence? Give a hug. So, so I kind of feel like you have really helped a lot. Thank you for these two missing girls. No. Why not? Aren't you trying to help? 
with the missing rose? Definitely not. Hmm. You're not listening. Okay. What, what do you want to tell me then? Because I think you already told me. Boys to men. All come. You're welcome. Okay, so I... Never mind. Okay, I believe that we had someone trying to help us with the missing girls. I don't know. Did you know? Jeffrey. Oh. oh, listen. Like, Jeffrey, listen. It's the same D male voice that freed me, man. I was just going to say, did you know what my name is? I couldn't get it out. Don't worry about your credit. I am listening to you. Are you? Okay, did you know the hunters? Any of the hunters that maybe injured or took the lives of those girls? You need to answer me. Was one of their names Carol? Who's over playing with the music box? Tell me who it is. Me. Okay, once again, I think you've helped us so much. I'm feeling weird, man. Okay. Once What's again, I don't idea? feel like human energy. Okay, I, I feel you. almost like just weird. That's why I asked you if you're human. And you're not. But I think you're... Nicer than you think. I think you've helped these young women that are missing. Them. I want peace. Great. And we want that for you too. Do you know the names of the hunters? Any other hunters that were involved with those girls? Okay, I got it. Okay. Oh. My legs are falling asleep. Yeah, okay. Crazy. My nose is so soft. Okay. Any of that? Yeah. Okay, I think oh, this, is a music this, box this stuff's been going on. Where is it? Dude, I don't know what oh, the... Shit. That's creepy. Dude, right and, by the, and the... I don't know. The light's not even going on when that's going on. Off. I don't know what's the deal with that. And that music box is going to go on haywire. This one? Yeah. And the lights don't go off with it, though. <laughs> Just the sounds. And this? Maybe that's the one that was going off. That's probably, I didn't notice it. It's turned the other way. Yeah. I'll, one time, two times. Going off? Yeah. A lot. Five times, six times. Okay. That thing's been going off like the music box. And so get this. I, I said, are you the two girls that are, possibly, that are missing from this area? What happened? You said hunters. And then I said, so you're killed by, are you, is your life taking a hunter? I said, you, and then you said something about a car, and I said, well, where's the missing car? And you said, water. And then I asked, I asked, so I hate to go down this, I know, I hate to go down this path, but is the missing car in the pond? And you said, yes. Oh, I remember hearing that, and I was like, yes. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Oh, damn, I'm so stiff. So, we have to do the DR60 and I'm going to be done. Yeah. It's always weird doing this because I don't know how to react. Because it's like I don't know what you were asking or like how many times stuff went off. Yeah. And I always end up watching and editing and I'm like, <laughs> holy f. <laughs> wow. That Estes session, looking back at it, 
was absolutely crazy. I mean, from the missing girls to the Mothman, and like I've been saying this whole time, it sounds crazy, I know it sounds loopy for me to say this, but it almost seemed inhuman, almost like an extraterrestrial, interdimensional energy that we were talking to. The voice that I was hearing through the Estes Method headphones was almost like a calm, very slight voice. It wasn't, usually when you do the Estes, it's kind of a frantic voice or a little clip or a blip, but this was a very smooth, very restrained voice. And to me, it didn't feel at all like any other location we've ever investigated. It felt totally different in a way that I can't even put into words. So yeah, the Estes was just crazy. All right, everybody, so we've been out here for hours now. Absolutely incredible amounts of REM pod activity, energy here. It's almost like a portal. It's really weird that I was thinking that all day. I don't know, I just dreams that I've had lately, thoughts that I've been thinking about this place and like learning the full story of the Mothman, what I thought. I mean, I, th I think it's some sort of interdimensional being, not really, you know, like a cryptid. It's like, so I don't really know, but we're, it's cold, it's rainy, I'm really stuffy, but we're gonna do one more DR60 session out here in front of the other bunker. Yeah. So. So, tons of activity, unbelievable. Well, so, ready? Yep. Okay. okay. Mothman, if you are around here, can you let us know by just a yes? Again, Mothman, your energy. Do you know what this place is called right here? And the other one that we were in, what is the actual structure called? Do you know what the city is that this is next to that we are in tonight talking to Jeffrey? Mothman, again, directly talking to you, do you like to run or fly or crawl the best? Which one do you like to do the best? Do you like to hang out in those bunkers right there? Are you from another dimension? If you live in the woods here, what is your favorite animal that you see each day? Were you ever alive on this planet? Do you happen to know the two girls that went missing? Is their car, the missing car in the pond here? Since you claim to know a lot, do you know what happened to those girls that are missing? Since you live here? Let me just ask you one more thing. What are you? Should we play it? Sure. Okay. Mothman, if you are around here, can you let us know by just a yes? Is that? 
Yeah, I mean, our, like some other. It's some something like. It's it's like some kind of like clicking, like. Yeah, people are gonna say Morse Morse code, but it's like that was like the strangest. I, mean, I don't have the most experience with the DR60, but I've never had anything like that. No, I've I've listened to a lot of channels and investigators that use that thing. I've never heard that. I have no idea. Wow. Okay. To me, that sounded. I mean, I know it sounds insane to say this to people, but we've been doing paranormal stuff almost 10 years now. And it's like, never heard a response like that. It's almost, I feel just like some weird, not earth energy here. And like something like interdimensional. And that sounded like either a trans, I know it sounds really weird, mm -hmm. but like the vibe that I get is like, a communication or a, mm -hmm. a transmission that we shouldn't have been receiving or something, you know, weird. Mm -hmm. And I know that I don't even know what I'm saying. It's just it's just weird. Like what do you what do you say to that? We're gonna use the DR sixty again when we get off of this property and it's gonna work normally. What what the hell would make it do that weird clicking stuff in between our questions? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then occasionally <laughs> like That's strange. I don't know what to Very make high. of that but it's late and uh, it's cold and we're gonna get packed up I think this has been a really good investigation oh, crazy. yeah really thanks Mothman thank you you still don't want to just come fly by quick say what's up I don't think Mothman's gonna show up. <laughs> yeah, no. We talked to something. Yeah. If you guys have any idea what all this evidence means, let us know below, because it's, this, this is gonna be a mind-blowing episode. <laughs> okay, man, let's pack up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
At the end of the day, when we left the TNT area, we couldn't help but feel strange. Whatever we had talked to that night just wasn't the sort of thing that we usually deal with. All of that incredibly intense REM pod activity, all of that energy, the weird clicking on the DR60, the Estes session, everything was almost too strange to believe. And as we left the area and saw the smokestacks from a nearby power plant releasing steam out into the air, I couldn't help but imagine Mothman stalking the night skies over Point Pleasant, in a way, looking to be found. But before we wrap up this video, when I was driving home, I passed by a small little town with a major monster history. And now I present to you the strange adventure that I went on on my way home from West Virginia. Hello, my name is Andrew Smith. I run the Flatwoods Monster Museum located in downtown Sutton, West Virginia. The Flatwoods Monster was um, a supposedly alien uh, sighting that took place on September 12th, 1952 in downtown Flatwoods, about four miles north of where the museum is located. It was uh, an entity that was described to be between 10 and 12 feet tall that was seen by a group of eight witnesses, uh, two adults and six children, ages ranging from nine years old all the way up to 32. It was uh, preceded by a object that appeared to streak through the sky and land on a nearby hill where the kids were playing at the time. And they decided they were gonna go check it out. And on their way, um, Freddie and Ed May, who were part of this group, decided they would stop in uh, to their home where Kathleen was, tell her what they saw. Then Kathleen decided that she should join them. She joined the group of six kids and also grabbed a cousin of theirs who, um, the way that I understand it, was more or less fresh out of army boot camp named Gene Lemon. So they decided to join the kids and traipse up this hill that was just above their home on a small farm called the Bailey Fisher Farm. And uh, they crossed the pasture fields, jumped some fences, and was walking up through the woods themselves when they uh, noticed movement from their left in the woods and sort of this awful smell filling the air at the same time. Once they noticed what was moving in the woods, they saw what they described to be a 10 to 12 foot tall monster. It's come to be known as the Flatwoods Monster. And um, as they noticed it, it noticed them, it, you know, scared them to death, uh, sent them running back down the hill. And uh, when they got home, they called the emergency number, which at the time actually called in over at the Braxton County Jail. That's actually just one block over from where the museum sits and it still stands there today, even though it's been decommissioned. Um, that's where the emergency number called into and the jailer would actually take calls and dispatch sheriffs and deputies to go check things out. Um, and it was actually the jailer's daughter, uh, who was 14 at the time, that answered the call from a then fairly hysterical Kathleen May, who sent out uh, both the sheriff, the sheriff's deputy, and her father, who ran the jail. So they went and uh, took the testimony of these kids and the adults and uh, checked out the sighting location. But by this time, it was completely dark. So uh, using their flashlights, you know, they, look, they looked around on the hill, but they didn't see anything. Whatever that they thought may have either landed or crash landed on the hill, they couldn't find any evidence of. But again, it was pitch black. Um, and this figure that they saw walking around the woods as well, they didn't see, but that smell still hung in the air. But according to the uh, young lady that took the uh, phone call after her dad came back home and she asked her, asked her dad about uh, you know, what did the May see and that sort of thing. And, and he was real shook up, which caused her to be real shook up. And I actually got a chance to interview her just a couple years ago. And even still to this day, she thinks that what the, what the May boys saw and the, all those, the kids and the witnesses, um, that they did see an alien. Wow, so that's what you think it is? I don't know. I do think that regardless of what it is that they actually saw, that it didn't make any sense to them as to why it would be there if they didn't recognize it as anything that they knew. And even still to this day, it's nothing recognizable to them. I know Freddie Mae pretty well personally, and he was 11 when the sighting took place. And I believe right now he's either 81 or 82, and he still doesn't know exactly what it was that he saw. And there's no other sighting since then? 
None that I know of. And what, what always baffles me is the description that was given, the pictures drawn by their descriptions and things like that. Nothing else that has been seen since, either here or anywhere, um, really fit that description. Uh, whenever people think aliens, they often think, you know, little green men, grays and that sort of thing, not 10 to 12 foot tall monsters. That's more or less what they described, or at least what was reported at the time. This, this depiction of the Flatwoods monster is sort of the most popular and has been used the most and referenced the most when it comes to people citing the Flatwoods monster or like designing toys or video games or whatever. But this, this drawing was not, it was not done by a witness. It was done based on the witness testimony of Kathleen May. So I've often wondered how much of this design is the details of this drawing. Are they based directly from her? How much is sort of filling in the gaps by the artist? Because if you look at the witness drawings of what they thought they saw, they're pretty crude and they lack a lot of detail and, and they're usually focused on like the head area and not the whole body. So it was 10, 12 foot tall, uh -huh. red. So it was the, the, the face, the head was described as red. The spade-like shape behind the head was described as dark. Sometimes depending on what you read, you'll read dark red, you'll read black, you'll just read dark. The body is often described as dark, sometimes colorless, sometimes green. Um, some details may be slightly different. So you kind of have to try to find the truth within all of it. I will say though, it is a very creepy looking alien. Yeah. I would not want to see that out in the forest, no. man. No, thank you. Would you want to see it? No. <laughs> no. One day, Interesting. I went, yeah, I went camping with my wife at an area where a friend of mine told me he had recently gotten Bigfoot reports. And I thought, we're going to stay up late. We're going to set up by the campfire with no lights. And we're going to try to hear or see us a Bigfoot. Well, while we were sitting there, it was getting close to midnight. We hear footfalls close to us. And, and it scared the daylights out of us. So real quick, turned on a flashlight, pointed in the general direction. And it was the smallest like coyote <laughs> you've ever seen, but, but and it was little. I mean, it was, as, it was bigger than a house cat, smaller than our house dog, but still terrified us. <laughs> so we knew right then we are not ready for Bigfoot. Yeah. Just like we're not ready for the Flatwoods monster. No. <laughs> Is Bigfoot big around this area? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Really? It's, it's kind of getting there. I didn't really know that it that it would or could, but just in the last maybe four years, I've been discovering old uh, Bigfoot accounts or old sighting accounts that sound like Bigfoot, even if Bigfoot's not mentioned. And that precipitated into a year and a half ago, the West Virginia Bigfoot Museum um, establishing just down the street at the, like on the other side of the courthouse, which I haven't even mentioned that to you. Yeah. They have a Bigfoot museum here yeah. too? Yeah, just like a block and a half away, although they're not open today. They'll be open tomorrow. Damn. The <laughs> one might, day. Uh, might be able to call in a favor. Dude, that, that's Depen crazy. Depending on your time. I mean, I have, I'm have. i just driving back home. Okay. That's... Well, I could. My name is Janet Six, and you are in the West Virginia Bigfoot Museum. This big guy over here started it all. A local gentleman is from a nearby community as a wood carver, and he surprised us one day with this wood carving of Bigfoot and that began the conversations with other customers coming into the little country store they would see it and be like I know a story about my from my grandfather or from my uncle or I saw one of those a few weeks ago on the family farm then later this gentleman Les Odell came in this is his collection all these casts are original have been found in West Virginia he saw a posting on Facebook of the carving wanted to come and see it then the conversation started. He wished he had a place to show and display his cast. And then he connected us with a different gentleman, Daniel Boone Smith. And these are also casts from West Virginia and our original that he's found. So these are two big first researchers from West Virginia. We have some copies of some of their casts as well so people can see them. So that's how it all started. So a lot of Bigfoot sightings around here. Yes, um, there's been numerous sightings around the lake specifically, uh, the Wolf Creek area up in the backwaters of the Sutton Lake and the Elk River. So that brings it into the community. And then there's been sightings throughout West Virginia, as you can see by some of the labels on where these casts have been found. And what do people usually describe Bigfoot as when they see it, I guess? Actually, a lot of them consider it an ape-like creature. 
Um, most of them consider it harmless. Actually, a lot of individuals who spoke said that they don't really want people on their property or tell people specifically where they saw it because it's harmless and they don't want anybody to hurt it. It's not evil like that. <laughs> <laughs> that guy, yeah, that guy looks kind of evil. Yeah, that guy there. looks a little bit bad. <laughs> he looks like he might be a little bit mad. But yeah. no, most people say that he's very friendly. We've actually had a gentleman coming in who told stories of multiple generations have traded with it, where they know the smell of the Bigfoot and they'll smell it in near the family farm. They'll leave out a basket of root crops near the edge of the property in the woods. And the next day there'll be a small offering back like a dead rabbit, a dead squirrel, something like that. So they've literally traded with Bigfoot for multiple generations. Really? Yeah. Traded with Bigfoot? Yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of people coming in to tell stories. We actually have a book here that Les Odell's collected of stories throughout the state. And you've never seen Bigfoot? I've never seen Bigfoot. Would you want to see Bigfoot? Yes, I would love to see Bigfoot. We've joked about, um, a couple of us here have joked about going camping out in the woods and just seeing what we could find, but we have yet to do that. <laughs> Maybe one day. Maybe one day. I guess you technically get to see Bigfoot all the time. Yeah, technically we do, yeah. <laughs> this, the same gentleman who did the first carving has done this one as well. Wow. And this is actually a technique that Les O'Dells came up with. He does an etching, a rubbing of the cast so you can see the better detail because sometimes the casts are hard to see. And these are the etchings of these two casts here specifically. Wow. Yeah, it is kind of hard to see. Yeah, when you look at them, there's not a lot of detail coming out. But when you come up here, you can see actual individual toes, a little bit more of the heel, the ball, the foot. I would say that is one big foot. Very big foot. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. So really with Mothman, I really came into it not really knowing much about Mothman. I'd heard of the name and I came away kind of amazed at how much history was tied to Mothman with tragedy and the sightings that people had, the experiences, kind of the culture of it worldwide. And I, I really came away thinking, you know, not so much fearing Mothman, but like, could it have happened with all the contaminated grounds that were there? You know, could it have been some sort of a connection to UFOs as they were kind of associated with at that time. There were a lot of UFOs, so was it an alien creature? All those kind of things really kind of went through my mind coming away from that. So I don't know that I got answers to really my questions. I, maybe more questions I have walking away from it, but that's what kind of keeps it intriguing is that as you dig into it a little bit more at a time, there's, there's even more to uncover as you keep going into the subject farther, but it, it's really amazing at how big of a phenomenon it is. And I really didn't realize it, but I, I definitely do now. At the end of the day, I love the Mothman story. I'm, you know, I obviously would love to go back in time and do a Mothman hunt myself when the Mothman was being seen. And I do wish that that nuclear power plant hadn't been destroyed so many years ago, but I think we've uncovered something deeper, something that nobody's ever uncovered before. The possibility of the presence of a paranormal portal right there in Point Pleasant. Oh, that was a lot of peas in <laughs> one sentence. But, I mean, look at the activity. The REM pods, all of them going off at the same time. The music box going off. The weird, at the very end, as you heard in the EVP on the DR60, that tapping, clicking noise. It was like we were tuning into a frequency from another planet or some sort of phantom broadcast. I mean, this is the end of the trip. We've used the DR-60 since that investigation. Haven't heard a single noise like that since. And we've only heard it that one time ever on that device, which is so weird. It's almost like we had tapped into something that we weren't meant to hear, if that makes sense. But the energy out there is unbelievably strong. And while we didn't capture the Mothman on camera, not that I really thought that we would, I think that we captured something even greater. We captured the possibility of the Mothman on camera. We showed that there is a phantom energy, that there is some sort of mystery to the area that, you know, is totally unexplainable. And to me, that's very cool because it shows that all the people that have visited the area and had experiences, all the people that had experiences, they're not crazy. There really is something going on in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And even though we don't know exactly what it is, maybe one day we will. But for now, it's Colin Brown. I hope you guys are enjoying these long West Virginia videos. We definitely had a lot of fun making them. 
Um, I love you all so much. Thank you for watching. And uh, as always, we'll see you next week and stay spooky. Hello! <laughs>